Hello everyone. Again, we are here for part three in finite element method. In in a nutshell, the recapitulation of last two lectures. In lecture uh, one, we were discussing about the basic steps in finite element analysis. There were basically nine steps to solve any structural or fluid or heat transfer problem. In in lecture two, we were discussing the formulation of global stiffness matrix. Now we are here to discuss the implementation of boundary conditions for various problems. As while solving any finite element problem, especially the structural problems, in questions there are following information which you would be having: the material properties, the geometric data, and some boundary conditions. Boundary conditions plays a very important roles because we are using. we are using the so called matrix method to solve fe problem using finite element method it means there we will be solving or we will be creating whole lot of matrices the matrix size varies from 2 cross 2 to say 2000 3000 cross 3000 this much size it means to perform these operation we need to have computers which are highly efficient to solve those particular problems now the boundary conditions on any particular uh, problem are the condition which are used to configure the system with the reference frame for example the reference for frame for this room is that uh, left corner x y z directions okay so the basically to solve finite element problem there are two kind of boundary condition which we use generally one is the elimination approach and second one is penalty approach basically in ll the elimination approach used while solving the finite element prob problem analytically and second the penalty approach used while solving fe a problem using any uh, say computer program or something so for the for here we will be implementing the elimination approach to know how to solve this problem or how to apply the boundary condition for a given problem we have taken the earlier problems this is a simple beam left hand is fixed on right hand side we are having a roller support the material properties and geometric data is given over here actually in this problem our objective is to find the deformation or nodal deformation at each and every individual nodes so to solve this problem we have uh, divided or discretized the whole problem into two elements element number 1 element number 2 and then we had given the node numbering node 1 node 2 and node 3 then calculated the global stiffness matrix k1 and k2 we have already discussed in the earlier lecture then we have formulated the global stiffness matrix using k1 k2 this is the global stiffness matrix then we need to find out the force vector final force vector we have already calculated final force vector then we need to find out the nodal displacement vector this is the final nodal displacement vector it means we are having equation 1 equation 2 equation 3 it means stiffness matrix the load vector and the displacement vector now while forming any finite element problem this is the general equation where we need to input each and every conditions in k matrix this is called global stiffness matrix there we will be including the geometric data and the material data which is over here then u matrix uh, in u uh, say column vector we will be having or we will be like inputting the information related with the boundary condition boundary conditions then in third case load vector f where we will be having the external forces which we had already applied on this particular system so here we had applied at center point means node number 2 the 200 kN force that is downward direction that is why we have taken 200 because uh, we have already taken is in a, a particular unit that is why that kN is uh, uh, some much kind of now equation 1 equation 2 and equation 3 we have already put at this equation this is part equation 1 equation 2 and equation number 3 now how to apply the boundary conditions in given case we are having a beam left end is fixed right end is having a roller support what it means if left end is fixed it means at each each and every node we are having two parameters one is nodal displacement that we call v 
and second one is rotation term. This is for node 1, that is why V1 theta 1, for node 2, this is V2 and this is theta 2, uh, for node 3, we will call it V3 and theta 3. Now, if this particular beam is fixed at a particular point, if it is fixed at a particular point, it means that this point or this node is uh, not going to deform neither by displacement or nor uh, it is going to def uh, say rotate. It means for this particular problem, V1 and theta1 is equal to 0. At second point, at node number 2, there is nothing like any boundary condition. It means there would be deformation. Coming to node number 3, at node number 3, we are having roller supports. Roller support means this particular node, while applying the force, the distribution of force from this point, particular point, uh, node 2 to node 3, it is going to travel. On that basis, the node 3 is going to go left or rightward directions. But it is not going to have the vertical component or displacement in vertical direction. If it is not going to have a displacement in vertical direction, it means here V3 will be equal to 0. So, V1 is equal to 0, theta 1 is equal to 0, V3 is equal to 0. Boundary condition means fixed at those particular nodes. If they are fixed at particular node, it means no rotation, no vertical displacement. If roller support, it means it is going to travel. It means theta will be having some values which we are going to find out, but vertical displacement will not be there. So, V3 is equal to 0. So, these three values, because we are already, um, now we, we know that V1, theta 1 and V3. V3. Now, if we are having three known already, then why to solve this 6 cross 6 equation? It means we are having uh, 6 unknown. These are the parameter which we are going to calculate. If we are already having 3 in, uh, three value known, then supply those value into this matrix. V1 is equal to 0. Theta 1 is equal to again 0. Then your V3 is equal to 0. If we are, we already know the value as V1, theta 1 and V3. It means we need to neglect these three particular row, rows and columns from this KUF equations. So, what we are going to do? Firstly, mention the numbering. This is V1, theta 1, V2, theta 2, V3, theta 3. This is V1, V2, sorry, V1, then this is rotation term, V2, theta 2, V3, theta 3. Now, the values which we already know, B1 is equal to 0, it means we are going to remove first row because B1 and first column V1. In similar way, we already know the value of theta 1 means theta 1 row and theta 1 column we are neglecting. Then we know V3 means V3 row and V3 column. Once we have the particular neglected these values. Now, our matrix size, the k size is reduced to 3 cross 3. The vector size is or your u, u vector is reduced to 3 cross 1 and the f reduced to 3 cross 1. Now, we need to supply or we need to rewrite this KUF equations. Sorry, there is tester. Okay. To rewrite this equation, again, this is your matrix K, now it is 3 cross 3, this is your force vector, oh, sorry, displacement field, and this is your vector. So, what are the values? We have already removed equation, the, this first row, first column, second row, third column, then values we know, this is 24, then 0, then we are having 30, then so next value is 0, 200, then 50, then third value we are having 30, 50, 100. In similar ways, this is V2, theta 2 and this is 
theta 3. The values we asked which we left 200, 0 and 0. This is your reduced k u f equation. Now, we, you are having 3, 3 cross 3 square matrix, 3 cross 1 column vector and 3 cross 1 column vector. Now, multiply these two vectors, equate them, it means you will get 3 equation and 3 unknowns. Now, to solve this particular problem because our objective is to find this unknown, Every everything rest we already know, but here we have left out this this particular parameter will also go there, it is 4800 by 125. Now you need to convert this matrix into equivalent equation and solve those equations. In summary, what we did to implement the boundary condition while solving any class of problem, may let it may be the structural or fluid or thermal, we need to supply the boundary conditions. Boundary conditions, there are two types of elimination approach and penalty approach. Penalty approach we use generally while solving the FEA problem using computer code and the elimination approach is used while solving the, this problem. A particular, for particular problem, you need to find out the stiffness matrix for this particular element K global, then force vector Kf, uh, only F and then displacement field. Now this is the generalized equation, put those values on this particular format. Then redraw draw your dra diagram, the location where particular point is fixed, it means there is no rotation, no rotation means we know the displacement is going to be 0. If there is roller, it means it is going to travel on x direction but vertically it is not. So, V3 is, uh, is equal to 0 but it is uh, theta 3 is going to have. So, theta 3 uh, we, we need to find out. Then the values which are 0, it means we already know, we will cross out respective rows and columns. Once we have like remove those irrespective rows and column, we left out these equations in reduced form. Now, if you are going to solve this problem, you can solve it by Gauss elimination or any Kramer's rules or any other approach which you have already studied in Math 1, Math 2 or Math 3. In part 4, we will be covering the implementation of boundary condition for thermal problem especially. Thank you.